we were discussing uh, in the corrosion playlist that there are certain types of corrosion there are certain patterns uh, which destruct or damage the metal from its surface and since just because this reaction is unwanted it obviously is going to affect the uh, property of the metal we want to treat it properly right so we were talking about reverse of extraction of metal in this playlist i have uh, posted many videos regarding types of corrosion Hi, I am Neha and today I am going to discuss intergranular corrosion for uh, the other type, right? So, today we are going to see what is intergranular corrosion. It is a less visible corrosion damage first of all. So, you are not able to see it from the surface but it happens inside surface. And it is also known as intergranular attack. So, you may call it as IgA. And it's a form of localized corrosion. So, it intensifies at a particular place. It's quite localized. It is giving, you know, preferential attack at some places. And what are those places? The places are grain boundaries. The metal where you have grains, you have crystals, they do have a boundary which they share, right? That area, the boundary area or the area near to it has uh, the attack basically, while the entire center remains uh, almost uh, neutral to it. So, the only attack happens at the boundary area. IGC is commonly found in passive alloys. Uh, it is found in the alloys generally because, you know, when you mix two, three metals together, then there are highly likely portions uh, of grain boundaries where they do attain anodic and cathodic character. And also, it happens in a specific corrosive media. So, it's not only like that every time whenever you make alloys, they do corrode. However, they are passive, right? But they do corrode in the presence of specific corrosive media. Like some occurs in case of ammonia, some occurs in case of other thing, right? It's because of some corrosive media. So, the two conditions have to uh, be met, right? That results in the loss of strength and ductility. Obviously, it's a corrosion. So, the metal property has to get lost. Intergranular corrosion is also known as intercrystalline corrosion and interdendritic corrosion. As I said, it is all related with the grain, uh, size, grain structure and crystalline structure. So, that is how it is known as intergranular and intercrystalline. Also, when that specific condition is met, that means if there is a stress portion also to the material. So, what will happen is two types of corrosion gets mixed and then you can call it as intergranular stress corrosion cracking. Uh, remember, I, uh, in the video of stress corrosion, I told you that there are two uh, conditions, a specific and a selective. I said that specifically uh, the area which is under stress is uh, getting corroded while uh, selectively there are many uh, solutions in presence of which the compound gets corroded. So, here also the same thing happens if stress also is there and also some kind of uh, selective solution is present that in, uh, then it undergoes corrosion. So, sometimes you may refer it as IGSCC or SCC. It is different from SCC, right? That is a stress corrosion. I am talking about intergranular corrosion which is ICC and sometimes a higher level could be merger of these two things. So, uh, first of all make yourself clear that it is not a stress corrosion. In a stress corrosion, there will be one stress, right? There will be one area where it is under stress and then there will be one environment in which it happens. While in intergranular, it is not a requirement that the material has to be in a stress, right? The material has to be, uh, it, it, it could be planar. There is no stress, even then it undergoes corrosion. So, let us go ahead with what I am talking about. If I take a very significant and prominent example of IGC is uh, this only, where homogeneous and uniform depth uh, you can see of attack. See, basically these are the grains which I was talking about. These are the crystals and these are the boundaries, right? The two crystals are sharing uh, the boundary. This is the boundary. I hope you are able to understand. Now, if these are the boundary and then what happens is a stenitic stainless steel, especially there are many grades of steel, but right now I am talking about a stenitic uh, stainless steel. What happens is the chromium near uh, the boundary gets precipitated. It reacts with the carbide and it gets precipitated here. Right. So, when it gets precipitated, these yellow, yellow particles, uh, these are chromium carbide. Now, you imagine chromium and carbon has reacted and they have precipitated in the form of uh, what? Chromium 
carbide right ha chromium carbide so these chromium carbides are the precipitates which are there at the boundary fine now what do you understand when at the boundary chromium carbide is precipitating then what happens near the area near the boundary near the boundary chromium amount would be more or would be less what do you think this area would be chromium depleted or this area means i am talking about the boundary area or the center area so where do you found uh, chromium more the amount of chromium would be more here or would be more here think a while i hope you have understood that the chromium amount would be depleted here in the grain boundary region because that chromium is already precipitated so what you can see is there are two different uh, areas developed here one is the grain boundary which is chromium depleted area and one is the grain center where still chromium amount is more and that is how anodic and canodic uh, cathodic areas get developed now if you see uh, the microscopic image here you can see the boundaries easily that is how it is getting intensified corrosion here it is less here it is more so what happens is since the boundary becomes anodic it becomes corroded so in igc what happens is the uh, intense and localized attack takes place and it is only happening at the grain boundary and leaving the entire grain interior unattacked so the interior does not get attacked because that is cathodic so first what are the steps involved let me revise it for you first a rapid precipitation will occur of a phase from a solid solution at the grain boundary so in the previous example the precipitation was of chromium carbide now because of that precipitated compound that act as a cathode and the grain boundary act as anode because what happens is at anodic area uh, there will be depletion the anodic area will generate uh, the anodic potential would be more than that of the grain center uh, potential and that is why the grain boundary uh, is at higher anodic potential so you can see that the potential difference is created due to which uh, the anodic grain boundary get dissolved so this dissolution is corrosion normally fine and obviously uh, you'll call it as a localized uh, because it is intensified at a particular place only and uh, imagine as i said earlier also in the videos that the ratio is very important here also what happens is anodic area is very less and the cathodic area is large so the ratio of cathode to anode area is greater than 1 now do you remember when the uh, cathodic area is large electron uh requirement becomes more and the electron is supplied by the oxidation of anode so the oxidation increases at anode so if cathodic area is large it will result in intensified corrosion at anode so that also happens here so i think localized world is clear to you that it specifically it happens at the grain boundary thing and secondly what happens is it's non uniform corrosion because it not always takes place at uniform fashion like if you can see in this diagram this is not uniform right the precipitate gets uh, precipitated somewhere not uh, uniformly gets precipitated so wherever it is precipitated only that area will become depleted and that area will become eroded so obviously it is a non uniform corrosion and it preferentially takes place at the boundary region so on uh, like conclusion basis you should remember that the anodic portion would be boundary cathodic portion would be center and also it leads to sudden failure because that is extremely dangerous form because uh, you are not able even to see that it takes place on a microscopic scale and then until the entire grain is affected it does not come on surface and now coming to the uh, second uh, thing is how which metals basically are commonly affected by igc so here what i have done is i have provided you a list of the uh, metals which get affected by igc you may remember any of them uh, for your notes formation uh, first is obviously a stannitic stainless steel grades we discussed it in detail that it happens because of precipitation of chromium carbide and yes that also happens that precipitation of chromium carbide is known as sensitization now this sensitization process occurs at a particular temperature range so uh, if we does not you know fo follow this particular thing the precipitation may increase or may decrease 
then there are uh, nickel copper alloys especially they when they are exposed to hydrofluoric acid then only they undergo nickel molybdenum alloys when exposed to hcl and h2so4 then only molybdenum gets precipitated uh, nickel chromium alloys uh, then aluminum different different grades where also copper aluminum precipitates at the grain boundary Uh, zinc of higher purity is not prone but then when it is alloyed with aluminium then it causes an igc attack so one more factor here is the formation of alloys uh, as uh, you should remember now that it occurs when they are heated and held in wrong temperature range because only then the chromium uh, reacts normally uh, carbide formation takes place these are simple uh, images and i guess now you are able to understand what igc looks like these are more of the images that are like uh, to discuss and show that how does a igc looks like on surface and this is the microscopic view so lastly how to prevent such type of corrosion so obviously you have to undergo uh, the treatment of the uh, reason right so first the obviously use low carbon otherwise carbide formation takes place so a low carbon also a uh, use a stabilized grade alloyed with titanium or niobium so titanium or niobium are also uh, making carbides but they react with the carbon and they make carbides and that's how uh, chromium does not uh, get to react with the Uh, carbon and form carbide so that is also one of the option and this is the best option wherein you know you use post weld heat treatment followed by rapid quenching the rapid quenching means you immediately decrease the temperature so in that case the precipitation does not happen precipitation normally happens when you miss held uh, the welding techniques right so these are the general three methods Uh, other than that i have already uh, discussed the types of corrosion in other videos and the methods to prevent a corrosion so i guess for uh, now it is this much you are able to understand what is igc uh please uh, do hit like if you have already liked the content and you want me to post more give me some kind of motivation so please do mention in the comments also if you would like some other topics to be covered uh, thank you for now thank you so much